hi and welcome to this fourth video in this series of uh, how to use Excel for admin use. In this video we're going to look a little bit about or look a little bit at uh, if organization. Um, in the previous uh, video we were uh, working with uh, these um, different uh, drop down lists and we created some drop down lists here to identify uh, or to uh, put categories on the status if it's identified, if it's in progress or if it's uh, completed. But this requires that I manually go in and change the status in this column every time I put something in started or in completed or even if I just um, generate a new uh, a, a new task. Uh, so that requires additional work for me that is unnecessary. I don't really want that. I, I it's okay here when you work with Excel to be a little bit lazy um, and to have Excel do the work for you if it's possible. And in this case, it is possible. Only thing is though that it is uh, I, I put in a drop down list here, which will not allow me to put in anything else in this column. So for me to automate this process. I actually need to get rid of my drop down uh, drop down list. I do that by clicking here or marking the column or the cells uh, in this column that I have. Right now I only have uh, from row 6 to row 19. If it's a large um, uh, task manager uh, sheet it could be maybe 400 rows or more. But now I only have these, four, uh, these few because then I don't need to scroll down and uh, uh, it's easier for you guys to see. And for this purpose, the, the tutorial purpose, we don't need more. So I, I mark this, I go up in data, I go into here my data validation, click on it, and I change it from list to any value, so it's back to where we started, okay? Now I don't have the drop down anymore, so I delete what I had in there. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to use the if form. Uh, there's uh, different ways you can use the if form. You can do as we've been doing before by going up here, choose your if form, you can type it up here, you can uh, go in and select all and find it on the list, or if you've been using it originally, then you'll have it on your list already. I have it on my list already, so I click on it. Um, there we go. And then you can go in here and put the logical test. Uh, uh, here and if you use this method you will put in the first if form and you're going to use several if forms here you're going to be using three of them you'll put the first if form here uh dot logical test what happens if it's true and then what happens if it's false and what happens if it's false is where you put in two other if forms where you need to be typing everything manually it can be a little bit hard to keep the overview if you do it this way uh therefore i actually prefer to do it directly up in my um, in my status bar up here um, so but f um, yeah so let's uh, and, and and again one of the upsides of doing here is you can just click here say okay I want to look at the, this column is it uh, uh, larger than um, than oh sorry larger than zero um, and if that is uh, if that is true now it says false because it's empty. If that's true, then what happens? Uh, well, what happens here is I want to go to my drop down list and say, well, then it's completed. I want to make sure that it's this exact cell. So if I copy it, it doesn't damage anything in my forms. Um, so I put in uh, I put in the dollar sign both in front of the um, column and in front of the row. Uh, and then I go click here again. And you can see it's completed. So this way you can you can actually follow that you've typed in everything correctly so far. But when you come down to this one, this becomes a little bit hard. And the reason is that the way I want to, I have three things I want to put in. The, I want automatically to be put into this uh, this cell. If I want to know if it's been identified. Now, when has it been identified? It's been identified if something is put in the cell over here in the column category, and nothing more. I only know the column category. I don't. It hasn't been started yet, and it hasn't been completed yet. I just know that there's a task here under that falls under this category. Then I want the status to say identified. This means that the started cell is empty, and the completed cell is left empty as well. Now, if I filled it, if I started the task, I filled in a starting date in the starter cell, 
then I want this the status cell to change to put in process. That means that there's something in this cell, the category cell is greater than zero. It also means that the starter cell is greater than zero. But the completed cell is still zero. Nothing is in it. It's empty. Now if I put something into this last cell that I'm looking at, the completed cell, and that one is it's a, a, an end date, meaning this cell is greater than zero then this the status cell should change to completed to do this i need to start and to have this automa automated in excel i need to start backwards so i start by saying okay should it be completed if something is in here yes so this overrules the others if something is in here it puts completed but if this one is left empty then i go look at the started date well is it in process then if there's a date here yes if not well then it's empty. Then I go look at, is it identified then? And if something is in here, yes, it's identified. If not, then I just want it to be left blank. So I go backwards, you see. And we're in the in, in, in a work process. You usually start identifying, then you start, you're in process, and then you complete it. But to have Excel do it, you do this automatically. You need to go backwards. Um, <clears throat> So what I need to do here is I need to start typing the form because if if it's false, if nothing is in here, I need to start typing a form saying, okay, is something in here? If yes, then what? If no, then what? If no, then is something in here? That's the third if form. So I'll do that by typing if, starting my parentheses. Then I'll say this cell is greater than zero. Then what happens? Well, if this is greater than zero, I want to go look at the drop down and I want to put in process. And again, I don't want to damage this, so I want it to be locked in case I copy, choose to copy this. And if this is not true, if it's not true, then what? If it's not greater than zero. If it is zero, then what happens? Well, then I look at another if form, and I start a new parenthesis. And I go to the first sheet, and I say, OK, if this is blank, I go over and look at this one, and see if this one is greater than zero. And if that is true, then what? Then I go down here again, I put identified, and once again, I put in the dollar sign to lock the cell, the row and the and the um, column, column, row. D is column, five is row. And if this is false, if nothing is in that cell, then I just want it to be left blank. I do that by putting in this. And now I need to close my if form. So I need to close this if form right here. And I need to close this if form right there. Okay. Now I can go up here. And I can see that up here it says completed if it says, but if it's false, it would put identified because there's there's nothing in uh, the other cell that I have. Okay, I'll put OK to this. So it puts identified, and that is because nothing is in this cell, nothing is in that cell, but something is in this cell. Let's say that I started this on the 2nd of January 19. Then it changed to in process. Let's say that I completed it on uh, 15th of February 19. Then it changed to completed. So this is the way that, um, that this works. We could put uh, just... Uh, uh, for the, the sake of the example, we can put in here another uh, start date. This could be um, 10th of uh, February 19. Uh, that, oh, of course, I have not copied it yet. So right now, I only have the form here. I don't have anything here. I've, of course, I want this to be applied to all the cells in this column. So I simply just drag it, boop, and it's done. So now you can see if nothing is in is put in here in either of the started column or the completed column and nothing is put in the category column it's left blank if nothing is put in the completed column or the started column 
but we have identified a category over here. It says identified. If we have identified a category and we put something in the started column, but nothing in the completed column, it says in process. And if we put something in the completed column, it says completed. So now it actually automatically does what I want it to do. So I can be lazy and only fill in here saying, what's the category? I can put a little description. I can assign who's responsible for it. And I can go over here and um, put in a starting date and a completed date. And then I actually have my process. OK. I still haven't used these columns. That's for later years, uh, use. And when we start doing some uh, statistics on this as well, uh, and some uh, counting of how many we have uh, of the different sorts of, of status. But that's not for this session. This session is over now, so I hope this gave you a little more insight in uh, how to use your, your Excels uh, for admin use. And uh, good luck on, on your Excels.